I want to invite you to give yourself a break. Late last night, my husband and I watched a program on the use of psychedelic drugs to treat depression and anxiety. Wow. Johns Hopkins is pioneering the use of formerly misused chemicals and it seems to be working. Cue the controversy. I found one part of the study very thought provoking. The research reveals that the drugs work in part by quieting two parts of the brain that talk to each other. Now these just happen to be the two regions that fire up when we think about, get this, ourselves. When they're silenced, anxiety and depression fades. Let me say it another way. When physicians turned off their patient's obsession with self, they found peace. Now that made me go straight to my Bible because that's what I do when I find a nugget that nudges me. Would the Bible tell me the turning off of never ending thoughts about myself and have I struggled with that could bring me contentment? As a woman who's fought some fierce battles with depression and anxiety, I wanted to know. Now, I found one of the shortest Psalms in the Bible. Psalm 131, verse 2 says this, I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child and its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. My spirit just wanted to lean into that. So I did by reading the other two verses in the chapter. Did I mention it was short? Psalm 131, O oh Lord. My heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. And on the other side of our soothing verse, Psalm 131, 3. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Apparently, David's contentment was prefaced by renouncing pride and ambition. By thinking a little less of himself, and the contentment he found by doing that was followed up by a firm affirmation that God alone is our hope. Now, lest you think David and his harp were parked in a spa parking lot where he'd just been refreshed by stillness, a Swedish massage, and a cool glass of cucumber water, Bible scholars believe that he wrote this when experiencing one of two really bad times in his life. Either it was written when King Saul was hunting him down to kill him, or it was written during the time when his wife was publicly mocking him for the way he worshiped God. Let's see, murderous threats from a mentor or marital discord on display for all of history to see. Yeah, seems like life wasn't a bed of roses when he found this contentment. He had every reason to be anxious and maybe even depressed. What I see is this, a man who had calmed and quieted his heart by cooperating with God, by making God high, and himself low. Sometimes the way up is down. I mean, the Bible says God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And Jesus told us in Luke 14 to take a low place when we show up at a party. If you're struggling with anxiety or depression, I want to invite you to give yourself a break. Aren't you tired of thinking about yourself 24-7? I know I am. And I think maybe our selfies have to go, along with our self-words, our self-worth, our self-awareness, our self-care, and even our self-esteem. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Your daughter does not need self-esteem. She needs God-esteem. If she understands who God is, she'll understand her value, but not make too much of herself. You and I need that too, Mom. Psalm 131 promises that if we think more of God and less of ourselves, we will find the contentment we're lacking. Now, I'm not saying it's not wise to ask your doctor for help if you need it, to see a Christian counselor when it's called for, or to take a day at the spa to push reset on your busy life. In fact, I vote for that. We are spiritual beings living in physical bodies, and we have to take care of both parts of us. But I am saying this. None of those things are complete solutions to our anxiety and depression. Not ours, not your daughter's. Only God's word can offer an ultimate solution. And it says the way up is down. It seems to me that David got over thinking about how he felt, what he wanted, and who he was at odds with, and just got consumed with thoughts about how big God is. When he did that, he found something every mom and daughter needs a big download of these days, contentment. And when he found that, he became a megaphone for the power of God.
Oh, mom of a girl, you love a whole lot. Put your hope in the Lord from this day until forevermore. And you know what I think? When she sees a mom modeling that, she'll want a taste of it. So what do you think? How about we give our selfies a break today?